Hey everybody, Jack from Astral Dawn Studios here. I'm gonna be taking you through a little bit of a tutorial on how to create your own GBA Fire Emblem portrait sprites. Whether it be converting from another Fire Emblem game, such as Three Houses, or just from your own project. I'm personally a really big fan of this sprite style. I've done many creations on my own projects. I hope to give you some of the knowledge I've acquired over time in this video. One thing to mention before we hop into my first point is that these tips are based on if you want to create portraits in strictly the Fire Emblem GBA style. I have my own style, so I break away from some of these rules that I lay out here, but this is just a natural process as growing as an artist and a creator. So uh, don't worry, I'll point out when I am breaking these rules so that you can understand where and why I personally deviate from a strict GBA style. Sweet, so let me start you off with my most important point, and it's from this tip that I'm able to derive all my knowledge for all the other tips. This is to use reference and inspiration. The most useful thing you can do to learn is to study what style you are trying to replicate. And I'm just here to show you my own findings and tips that I find that are universal in all Fire Emblem GBA style sprites. I'll have a link to the sprite sheet in the description. It's a big sheet of all the characters, from Fire Emblem 7, and it's super helpful if you want to kind of pick apart this art style in general. However, I should also clarify that it's important to also reference from real life, particularly if there's not an example in the sprite sheet pictured here. For example, if I wanted a man wearing a blazer, like this butler here, I couldn't go to the sprite sheet and find an example of a blazer there. Instead, I just whipped out the good old Google images and found some images of fancy suits on there. Next is the size of the canvas that we use. The size of the canvas, according to my measurements of the sprite sheet here, is 97 to 81 pixels. Now, the canvas size is not imperative. In fact, the key thing is actually drawing in proportion and size of the characters of the Fire Emblem games. To do this, you can compare the sizes from the sprite sheet to the ones that you're using. For example, I may get Eddie Wood here and then just copy and paste him next to it and compare the sizes and see that, yeah, their heads are roughly the same size, their shoulders are the same width, and it's all proportional to each other. Now, personally, I like to go for 128 by 128 size canvas. This is just because, kind of like the more recent Fire Emblem games, I like to show off a little bit of the clothes. But I think through clothes, you can show a lot of character and a lot of charm, but this is just my personal style. So if you want to stick to a more strict GBA style, crop it off at the shoulders. Another small thing to note about these Fire Emblem spikes is that they're always a variation of the three quarter angle. I have the two most extreme examples I found on the sprite sheet here. The first is Lynn when she's facing and talking to you, the player, and the next one is Durban. If you have a look at Lynn here, even when she's meant to be directly looking at the player, she's still slightly tilted. Durban on the other example is not quite a complete profile shot either. You can still see both his shoulders, which wouldn't be the case if it was a proper profile shot. Now it's time to talk about colors. One of the key pillars of art of this era is the restricted color palette. If you take a look at Legault here, you will see for every single different hue or color on a sprite, he will also have uh, three to six shading variations with the darkest shade always being the outline color. Let me show you what I mean. So if I take Legault and I get all every single color example that he has here, As you can see, I've taken all the colors from his skin here, and I've also extended the outline color in the bottom. Now, if I move on to a different hue, such as his cloak, I've got three shades here. If I move on to his hair, which is a different hue now, it's a lighter one, and I get this purple. This actually has four shades. And if I go to the cloak, you have another three shades. But what you'll notice is that all these different shades coalesce into the darkest shade, which is the outline color. Also notice that the colors are reused. For example, the colors in Legault's hair, this purple here, are also used in his iris and this buckle on his cloak. Also the brown in this leather satchel here is used in the shading of his skin. This is just a smart use of reusing color so you have more continuity within your whole piece. These are both tips I don't personally stick to in my portraits as I quite like to get detailed with the shading. However, this is just my style. So if you want to stick with the GBA style, then follow this pattern of three to six shades for every single hue. Another interesting thing about these sprites is that the outlines are always a dark blue of some sort and never black. This is because a dark blue, a dark red or a dark green outline still has some saturation in it. Now for many other pieces of art, black outlines are used and that is perfectly fine. This could even be a little bit of a stylistic choice on your end. But since the lines are so thick in pixel art, I would issue a warning 
um, to be very careful. This is because black can suck out a lot of the color in your piece, particularly if you're going for something more realistic. Because when you think about it, in real life, pure black doesn't exist very often, even in the darkest parts of your bodies, like your nostrils or your ears and so on. There will always be a little bit of light hue and saturation in there. Once again, I deviate from the style in my own pieces of art. This is because I take a similar approach to uh, Pokemon, where the colors and the darkness of an outline is dictated where, by where it is on the character. If we take Onyx here, we can see the parts of the body where the light is hitting, the outlines are lighter. Comparatively, where there is an absence of light, the outlines are darker. Now onto one of my bigger points, and this applies to a lot of pixel art in general, and this is the mindset that every single pixel matters. I have three examples of this. The first one is using general design principles. For example, if we take a look at Athos here, we can see how complex his hair and beard are. However, you'll notice sometimes that the lines that indicate strands of hair aren't fully connected. This is because part of his beard has more light on it. If we were to just finish the line, it will take out a lot of the more subtle shading and it just makes everything much more uniform. This strand of hair is also really interesting since it's actually taking advantage of an optical illusion where our eyes just fill in the gaps and assume that a line is there when in fact it is not. This is called illusory contours and uh, I had to look that up on Wikipedia so there's a little bit of a fact of the day for you. This point is really important for things like hair since you don't have enough space just to draw loads of lines with strands of hair instead you have to allude to them using subtle shading so then your brain can fill in the gaps. This can also be seen in my work here when you have a look at this lady's hair, you can see that the lines don't fully connect. This leads me on to my second example, is that you should use your lines to create shape. As you can see, I've created lines to curve around. This is to indicate that the hair is wrapping around the head and actually gives volume to the sprite. If you're just to add straight lines here, you'll quickly see how flat this makes it look. The final example of why every single pixel matters is because of the more subtle shapes you can create with shades. Let's take this lady's nose for example. I personally find noses really hard to draw. Um, this is because of the limited space to create one. To compensate for this, I use these different shades to give a little bit of form and shape. For example, if I was just to change these two colors, these two pixels here, you can already see how the nose is slightly more upturned. If I was to continue on going and get rid of two more pixels, you can see how that completely changes the shape of our nose just by moving a few colors around. So before and after, and that's only a six pixel difference. And finally, as a little word of encouragement uh, for all those people starting out, this is what I looked like when I started out. I'm pretty sure this is one of my earlier pieces and I distinctly remember just giving up on this piece early because I was so disappointed in it. But the key thing is that if you do end up with something looking like this, that's okay. Because if you keep at it and you keep going, you can end up with something like this. I'm now gonna cut to the speed art of my process from start to finish. So I'll see you there. All right, so here I just start with a basic circle over top of uh, Isadora's head. I try and kind of map out where her head would be underneath her hair and just try and you know understand that structure just to get a little bit of a platform to start off with. Because starting with a blank canvas is always the toughest part for me personally. Um, just trying to understand, you know, it's really intimidating a blank canvas. I also use uh, previous drawings heads um, or just like generally their sizes to compare. Um, and like this is the first part, just getting the shape and the structure down so you can fill it with colors later. This is the part I personally find the hardest. Other people, play, people may find it a bit easier, but I find it really hard. Um, I'm having a big bit of trouble with the shoulders. Um, I'll go into why and how I used a reference to solve that. All right, so kind of sped up a little bit. Here we have the character so far. I'm trying to just get the actual kind of body shape in there and see what it is like. So that's a little look. What is this character like? Um, I didn't say this before, but she is a dancer. So a bit of a kind of ballet. Um, so she's, she's gonna be quite athletic, lean in her muscle definition. And this is something to take into account, particularly with the shoulders. So if I go to Google, off. Very dynamic posing, which is not what I want. So maybe if we go interview, like as we want to like they're sitting down in an interview or something. All right, I think I found a pretty good picture. Let's break this picture down a little bit. Use red, because red's always good, man. She's got actually quite a strong neck here, but it, her traps kind of curve down. Then she's got these the strong shoulders, you know, because she's doing a lot of, I don't know what, I'm sorry, my, my lack of knowledge in ballet is really showing. But you know, so we're kind of just kind of outlining this and trying to see these shapes. So for example, let's see how we can manipulate these shapes. This is a rough shape of the shoulders, but say if I was to make them curve outwards slightly, 
Let's make our traps bigger. Uh, of course, it's not symmetrical. Bodybuilders would not be happy with this. Um, so, like, already you can kind of see a bit more musculature there, even though it's, like, not the best example, of course, but, you know, or a bit more musculature. So we don't want that. We want to kind of go back to our original one and be like, okay, so that's kind of what she looks like here. So this is what a ballerina looks like. Here, from here, I make the her whole frame just larger. Um, so I have a bit of pixel distortion. And so I really try and, like, make, keep the neck fairly thin um, and then round, I keep, like, dip the shoulders down and just... You know, make it look like she's in a 3D space. And this is where I find it really, really tough. Um, and just trying to get this stuff started. So you can see, I'm going to be spending a long time on getting this shape down. Um, here, I also measure out the size of the head to kind of figure out how big the body is going to be. Um, I also use uh, my previous story again to kind of reference the height. Like, so for example, one head tool would be uh, kind of like where you'll find like how long uh, one part of the arm is. So your upper arm or your forearm you know, and so on. So you can really use the head to kind of bounce off uh, the rest of your body. So this is why loads of people, when they're starting a piece or starting a drawing, they'll start with the head, because from the head, you can measure everything out to be proportional. <music> Trying to get breasts in there. I just draw circles. Um, it's a bit tough. You know, I just can't draw them very well. Um, but this is just where you have to keep on practicing and try try again. Same thing with the hair here. I kind of put a little bit of a print of where uh, the parting of her hair is and then draw out from that. So that's where the strains of hair will come from. Sadly, I lost a bit of the recording. So what I did in between this time and uh, with the time we're going to jump to is kind of put on a woolly coat and draw some these items of clothing on. So. The woolly jacket that we have, I used a reference from the White Witch from Narnia on, which is a really good reference, kind of uh, you know, gives the same vibes often. I just found a piece of clothing I liked, so that's another example of a reference I used. I also got a nose in and the eyes and just kind of got the facial structure down. I also um, put, gave her like a necklace and so on. So you can see here I'm cleaning up the lines. Um, I'm getting rid of all the extra corners in there. Um, I'm trying, like, just trying to make the eyebrows nice and um, you know thin and just how I you know get the right shape to them is the shape that I want. Make the jacket even more poofy. Um, and now I'm really just going in with the details. You know, I'm adding in. I added in a collarbone there. Adding in like a little. Uh, I don't know, like the, the the. I don't know what the name of that. Like the end of the dress is, but like the tip, little like the part where it's sewed in. And then then I just get colors. So I get colors from loads of places. Uh, I want a slightly more orange hair, so I found some orange hair I liked from Pooh's drawing. I found the same skin tone. I even went on Google and I was like, emerald, what is the color emerald? So I just wanted to, you know, get those colors down. And you can see I'm painting out these colors to get my uh, bit of a color sheet going. Now you will notice that I do break my uh, my little rule of only uh, my, my three color rule or five color rule. And this is just my where my personal style changes. I'm I quite like adding in a lot of softer tones and softer shadows, just adding in a ton of colors. Uh, I know other pixel artists um, tend to like keep things a bit more similar in their colors, or a bit more blocky, and that's absolutely up to them, and that's up to you as well. So um, I'm just kind of showing where I've kind of breaked uh, from the classic GBA style. Um, sweet, I'm kind of coloring the eyes in here. Eyes are a bit tough. Um, I Remember, I, I'm not trying to color him exactly black. I don't want it to kind of suck out that color. I've gone for a very dark green. So this kind of matches with her eye color as well. Also, uh, nicely complements or contrasts the orange color of her hair and eyebrows. And yeah, so now I'm starting the outline. And so here's a little bit of a issue I had. Um, and the great thing with pixel art, it's generally quite easy to clean up. Um, but as you saw there, I just wanted to make her a little bit larger in general. I realized she was a bit too small on the canvas in comparison to some of the other characters I've drawn. And so um, I just wanted to keep a consistent size because I think canonically these two um, characters are the same height. Uh, one is five foot four and the other one is five foot three. So it makes sense. And yeah, so here I'm coming with my, my type of outlines. This is another way place where I kind of break from the norm with uh, Fire Emblem GBA style. Oh, I kind of just cut her head in half there. See, you, I just like to edit stuff. I'm never quite done with the shape. It's always a bit tough for me to get the shape right first time. So um, sometimes it's just easier to start coloring in colors. And you can also see like the cheekbone and the jawline I was just having big issues with. I didn't quite 
uh, settle on something that I really liked. But um, then I then I did. I found something. I was like, oh, I'll just go with it. And sometimes you do, do just need to uh, fill in some colors and get going with the shading and get those uh, the sub pixel shapes and the sub pixel uh, shades because that can kind of transform from the binary and the smaller size that pixels tend to have and kind of craft a bigger picture on the outside, as I was talking about. So yeah, so I was talking about the outlines before and how I kind of break away from the norm. I like to go with colors, kind of like a Pokemon style. So if you have a look at um, uh, just like gen like Generation Four, for example, has like a good example of where uh, the outlines will still be darker than the stuff in the middle, but it'll be the same color. But also, if it is in the light, um, if it's like if there's light shining on that part of the clothing, I will still have an outline that's darker. But then I'll also have. Um, have the outline there that's slightly lighter than an outline that's in the dark. Uh, I'll have a picture of like an onyx come up on the screen right now. And you can see this is how I do it for the breasts here. Like the underside is darker and then the stuff that's on the top at the, is lighter in the outline. In the out, on the outline. Sorry, I can't even speak at the moment. Cool, and now I'm just filling in the colors. And look, it all just really comes together when you get rid of the, the black there. Um, and you know, it's, it's something that you just have to get used to. You just have to be uh, just trusting that you've got the shape right and then just go for the colors. I mean, I love coloring. Coloring and shading is my favorite part because where it all comes together, you know, um, and really you know, goes through here. And this is the part where I had a bit of intuition. Uh, so this, sometimes it just works. And this fluffy jacket, I wanted it to be more fluffy. So I kind of tried with a normal line and then I kind of added with this like back and forth and kind of added the frizzy stuff and I just wanted it to look kind of big and fluffy and you know like it was proper fur coat something that it, I would definitely not say is ethical um, let's just say that <laughs> so um, yeah and now I'm giving her tiara because uh, she's a ballerina and she likes to show off she likes being at the center of attention that's kind of her character oh and here we go here I'm going to actually show you how I use the sprite sheet very differently as you can see here um, the hair I did not like initially. It was a bit flat, so I kind of took it all out. I went to a character in the sprite sheet and really studied what um, that character was like uh, and had a look at their hair. I was like, oh, this is some really nice fluffy hair, really curly hair, because, you know, all about the fluff um, this character is. And so I just had an examination of what is the shading like, what changes do I need to make? And I realized that my hair was just too straight. I just start coloring in and trying to, you know, get those shapes down and change the outline. And, you know, it was a, it was a bit of tough work, um, you know, sometimes you have to just stick at it for a bit. Uh, this this piece overall took me about three hours to do in total, I think. So I'm just trying to craft the shape of the hair uh, and kind of, you can actually show the shape of the body so you kind of see it coming over the back of her shoulder. Yeah, so I just added the little details. These are, this is like when I get really picky about my shading and make things really light um, and like really subtle, uh, which I quite like to do, um, which is a, not too common in the Fire Emblem GBA sprites, so that's another difference, but that's just kind of how I do it. Changing up the other side of the hair to make it more fluffy. And there we go, and there we have it. Uh, I made a few extra changes from here to the final sprite. It contrasts better, you know. So I went to bed, I had a, I came back this morning and had a little look. And it's always good, as I say, just have a break occasionally and just have a look away and then come back to it. So yeah, that's it for me. Uh, if you want any other pieces of art for me to do, like any three houses characters or any other you know, Fire Emblem characters, or maybe even characters from other video games, if you want me to do a tutorial on that and how to kind of convert them to a more strictly GBA style, I can have a go at that and um, try and lead you through that. Uh, probably just gonna be a speed art because most of my tips are shown here, but you know, just say in the comments and I'll be really happy to do so. This has been a tutorial by uh, Astral Dawn Studios um, I'm Jack and I'm one of the workers here. I do all the art for our current game, which is a game called Dodo Alone, a game about a dodo running from its extinction. Um, and we release devlogs every two weeks. So if you want to kind of keep up to date on uh, any more tutorials that we may have for just game development in general, uh, pixel art animation will be another one I'm going to do in the future. Um, or any devlogs if you're just interested in, in the game in general, feel free to hit that subscribe button or have a look around the channel before you kind of commit further. Uh, we also have a Discord, so if you actually have any art and you want to kind of um, maybe ask me personally if I could give you any tips, feel free to have a look on our Discord channel um, and join that. Three. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, it's been a real pleasure actually making this art. I haven't done any dialogue sprites in a while. I mean drawing dodos for the last uh, few months so coming back to uh, an another human character was quite fun and just being able to break it down something that i've been meaning to do for a while uh, but i didn't get quite around to it until now so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time ciao